Throughout this course, you'll be doing calculations with measurements. Now, we've learned how to track uncertain digits while doing addition and subtraction. In this tutorial, we'll learn how to track uncertain digits while doing multiplication or division. Our example, you're needing to report the area of this part here in square centimeters. The length measurement and the width measurement come from two sources. So what are we going to do to report the result? What are the appropriate sig figs? Again, we'll begin with remembering that the measurements themselves have one uncertain digit at the end of each. So let's do the multiplication, identifying all the digits that were impacted by an uncertain digit, which makes them uncertain. The blue numbers result from the first uncertain digit, and the yellow numbers from the second uncertain digit. Green numbers result from a multiplication involving two numbers that are both uncertain. At this point, we do the addition at the end here, tracking our uncertain digits down the columns. And again, if an uncertain digit is involved in a column addition, then the result is also uncertain. We see that we have four uncertain digits, which doesn't work for us. We want one uncertain digit, so we have to get rid of some digits. So anything to the right of the six here gets removed, leaving one uncertain digit. Also note that after the six, we have a two here, and that's less than five, so there's no rounding up. And our answer becomes 76 centimeters squared. Now, tracking it through like this is time consuming. Fortunately, for multiplying and dividing, there is a pattern that we can use. A rule we can follow is, we look at all of our measurements, and the one with the least number of sig figs controls our result. Our result will have the same number of sig figs as the measurement with the least number of sig figs. So looking at our example here, the 6.2 centimeters is the one with the least number of sig figs, two. Given that, we know that our answer must have exactly two sig figs. Therefore, we round to 76 centimeters squared. Easy as that. And this rule can be used for all multiplications and or divisions involving measurements. Now, here's an important aside here, just to make sure you don't get confused using some formulas. When we consider the number of sig figs in a calculation, we don't involve the constants. For instance, if you were calculating the perimeter of a circle, p equals two pi r, neither the two nor the pi would impact the number of sig figs in a result. They're constants, they're not measurements. The radius is the only true measurement here. So only the number of sig figs in our R would impact the number of sig figs in our result here. 